Growing up, blessings were a daily and integral part of family life. As is customary in Latin America, my mother would bless us every night before we went to bed, as well as on significant moments, such as on the first day of every new school year. My siblings and I would line up, and one by one, she would give us the traditional blessing, composed of five crosses. First, she would line her fingers in the form of a cross, and then she would make the sign of the cross over our forehead, over our lips, and over our heart. And then the fourth cross she would make over our body, just like we normally do when we make the sign of the cross. And the fifth cross was she held that cross that she made with her fingers up to our lips, which we then reverently kissed. As children, the meaning of these blessings were very clear. We never saw my mother as someone trying to usurp the role of the priest who would bless us at Mass. This was a different type of blessing. It was a constant reminder to us that God walks with us every day of our lives, both in the mundane and the extraordinary moments or occasions that life often brings. And it didn't matter how well behaved we were or not, or how impious we may have been earlier in the day. We got the blessing nonetheless, not as an approval of how our day went or how we were doing, but rather as an acknowledgement of our need for God's help for the following day. Regrettably, once my siblings and I entered into adolescence, we became more rebellious of some of my family's traditions, including our daily blessings. As they became infrequent, we naturally lost a sense for the grace that they imparted on us. But after many years, at the age of 25, the beauty of this tradition came flooding back to me. I was visiting my parents on what would have been the last time that I would see them before I was to be ordained a priest. As I stood up to take leave of my parents, my mother made the shape of the cross with her fingers one more time and blessed me, as she had done countless times before. But this time, adding at the end, now you belong to God. On December 18th, the Vatican issued a declaration titled Fiducia Supplicans on the pastoral meaning of blessings. And in this declaration, a distinction has been made between two types of blessings. Number one, sacramental or liturgical blessings. And secondly, pastoral or spontaneous blessings. This distinction makes the case that while maintaining the church's doctrine on marriage, which is richly celebrated through sacramental or liturgical blessings, the expanded understanding of pastoral or spontaneous blessings made by fiducia supplicans would under specific and rather quite restrictive circumstances allow for the blessing of same-sex couples in what the church calls couples in irregular situations, for example, divorced and remarried couples. Such an allowance acknowledges the need that all people of faith have for accompaniment, for help and grace from God and from the church, without necessarily endorsing any human activity that is not in accordance with church teaching. And while the declaration is not lengthy or difficult to read, it does take at least two or, or sometimes three readings to fully understand the philosophical and theological arguments that are being made. And I would encourage everyone to please read the declaration for themselves. Just go to the Vatican website and make a search and you should be able to find it. Unfortunately, what has been inaccurately reported in the media, both secular and religious, has been that Pope Francis had authorized a change in the church's doctrine on marriage. 
A thorough reading of the Declaration, though, reveals various affirmations of the Church's long-standing and unchanging teaching on marriage. So what will this mean, then, in all practicality, for St. Andrew Parish? In essence, it will mean a lot, as well as not much. There will be no discernible changes at our parish, as the Declaration does not allow for any public or liturgical blessings of same-sex couples, same couples or couples in irregular situations. So in that sense, not much will change. But much will change for the aforementioned couples who may request a blessing, let's say, after Mass, or within the context of a pastoral consultation with their priest at the rectory. Beforehand, this simply was not allowed. Following St. Andrew Parish's consistent mission of inclusion, where all are welcome, when requested, I will grant such a blessing according to the norms prescribed in fiducia supplicans. This will mean a lot to same-sex couples as well as couples in irregular situations who often find themselves on the peripheries of our church. Although not intentional, much of the current language used in the church's teaching on homosexual persons, gay marriage, and divorce is harsh by modern language usage and comes across as offensive. Add to that incomplete and inaccurate representations of church teaching on these issues by some clergy and laity, and the injuries are all the more painful. Worse still is the morally unacceptable justification that some people misconstrue from church teaching or scriptures to intentionally judge, discriminate, bully, persecute, harm, and even murder members of the LGBTQ community. All of which is wrong and sinful. In retrospect, this declaration is a significant, albeit a small step. For some members of the LGBTQ community and their families, this may be a welcome development. For others, it may not go far enough. And for some, no doubt, it may have gone too far. My friends, we will struggle with this. And much understanding, empathy, and love will be required of us all as we grow into this new reality and hopefully earnestly struggle to remain faithful to where the Holy Spirit is leading us. This weekend, the Church celebrates the solemnity of the Epiphany of the Lord, or what is commonly referred to as Three Kings Day. The Epiphany of the Lord is the celebration and recognition of Christ who came to bring light to all the nations, not just to the people of Israel, but to all the nations. The readings in the Psalm for this weekend consistently repeat this theme. And in the persons of the Magi, or the three kings, not only does God come to us, but they go to Jesus. They search him out. They follow the star's movements. Remember, the Magi were Gentiles, or non-members of the Jewish faith. And at no point in the story are they barred from encountering the Christ child because they were not Jewish. No questions were asked of them to ascertain their worthiness of such a divine encounter. Rather, in the story of the Magi, 
we find a God who is open to all and willing to receive everyone who desires to search him out. This divine mutual search, my friends, occurs all the time at our parish as people endeavor to live good and holy lives. None of us is perfect, including myself. All of us are in need of God's help, and as such, none of us of our own merit is worthy of God's grace. But all of us, regardless of who we are or how we live our lives, are welcome to experience God's infinite love. No one is excluded, for we all belong to God. <laughs>